So, the James McNeet nos va a dar la siguiente presentación entonces. Okay, gracias, Thank you very much. Gracias. Okay, here we go. Pressure's on. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay, good afternoon. I hope everybody had a good lunch. A nice break. So, so now uh, we, we have the data access lesson on how to access all the, these data products that you want and the different ways to do that. Um, some, some are uh, accessible to different groups, so we'll talk about that uh, today. <clears throat> I want to also acknowledge the help I've had from all my contributors, including uh, Gabriella. She's been a big help here in uh, putting these slides together. Um, we're uh, going to uh, also have Scott come up and talk a little bit about the uh, CSPP Geo later, I think. We'll see how this works. Um, if we don't have time, we might have to do that later. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do in this lesson, as far as the objectives, is to provide you an overview um, of the uh, Gozar series data access. I've already covered the uh, Office of Satellite Product Operations, so I'll be skipping that. We'll talk about Goz rebroadcast. Uh, that was one of the two direct broadcasts on the Gozar series that I talked about earlier. The other one is the high-rate information transmission, uh, Emergency Manager's Weather Information Network, the HRIT MWIN, and the uh, production, distribution, and access, um, which – oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yep, thank you for that. We'll also talk about uh, GeoNetCast, but we have a whole workshop on that, so I, I'll just cover a couple of slides. Natalia will give an introduction on that later, and, and I'll talk about some of the internet access. Oh, I see it's delay here. Okay, I'm going to skip this slide since we talked about that already. So for, uh, for an overview, we have a, a number of ways that people can get uh, products. The GOES rebroadcast, as I mentioned, is the primary relay of full resolution, calibrated near real-time data from the GOES R. And uh, as I mentioned, we get level 1B from five of the six instruments and level 2 from the GLM. The other, and that is a data rate of 31 megabits per second. The uh, second one, the high rate information transmission emergency managers weather information network is 400 kilobits per second. And that's a new service and it combined, it replaces uh, the legacy LRIT service and the legacy MWIN service that's on the old GOES um, 13, 14, and 15. The uh, product distribution access is in the environmental satellite processing and distribution system um, located at the NOAA Satellite Operations Facility in Suitland, where I work. And the PDA provides products as well and provides them in near real time and provides products only to authorized operational users. Non-operational users and users that do not have a real time need can receive products, can retrieve products from the comprehensive large array data stewardship system class. Now you're familiar with GeoNetCast Americas? And it's the Western Hemisphere uh, component of GeoNetCast, which is the near real-time global network of satellite-based data dissemination systems. Also, a, a number of uh, GRB uh, sites maintain websites and distribute products um, in other means. And so I'll, I'll describe some of those as examples. 
And we have a, a demonstration project underway uh, demonstrating the capabilities of the cloud to distribute products it's called the Big Data Project. And uh, so for now, those sites are available. You can look at those as well. And I'd mentioned the uh, uh, National Weather Service's Advanced Weather Interactive Processing System that forecasters use in our na National Weather Service. Well, they receive that data from a uh, satellite broadcast network that uh, NOAA uh, provides a stream to a commercial satellite service that provides that. And it's also available not only to the National Weather Service, but to sites that have a NOAA port receiver. Now I'm going to launch into the GOES rebroadcast, the GRB. And this is my job at OSPO. I chair the GRB user group. So we have uh, uh, 140 members in this user group. And we, anybody that's working with this, uh, this service can join. The GRB um, downlink is standards-based. It's documented in two key documents that you can get from the GOZAR website. The first one is the product definition and user's guide that describes GRB uh, data formats and how the data is structured. And the second one is the GRB downlink specification. The downlink specification has all the information, all the technical information about the GRB downlink, including the uh, um, antenna characteristics and uh, receive station um, requirements. Now, we don't provide those receive stations. Uh, users have to either build their own or, or purchase one. Fortunately, there are uh, many vendors now, manufacturers, uh, that provide uh, hardware and software. Um, C-Space is one. That's the uh, company that installed the system here. There are others as well. And they worked with us early on, so they would be ready when GOES are launched and GOES 16 uh, started transmitting data. So by using these standards and documents, the vendors and the manufacturers were ready. They also used a simulator that the program office provided and that simulator simulated the GRB single, so the, use, the uh, vendors and manufacturers could test that out, test their solution out early. And the University of Wisconsin did that and developed software called the CSPP, the Community Satellite Processing Package, and that CSPP software uh, is, uh, ingests the, the level one products um, based on these specifications, displays the level 1B, and generates a subset of the level 2 products at the receive station, like, like here. <clears throat> so the uh, products that we have on the GRB I mentioned are all six of the instruments, and uh, level 1B for the five, um, ABI and, and four space weather, and then level 2 for the geostationary uh, lighting mapper. But most of the products are level 1B. So Gabriella had this slide up earlier. Thank you for doing that. I can actually save some time. So, uh, you know, I, no, I appreciate you doing it because I'm going to skip right over this. So this is a comparison between the GVAR and the GRB. And you can see what an improvement we have with the GRB. And you'll have the slide to look at. So as I mentioned, to receive the GRB single, uh, you need a fixed dish antenna with dual left and right hand circular feed horn connected to two low noise amplifiers. That's because we have two channels, the left hand and the right hand channel. Each channel is about 15 megabits per second. So combined, we have 31 megabits per second for a data rate to work with. Uh, the radio frequency and the intermediate frequency down converters are connected to the digital video broadcasting S2 capable receiver. There are a number that are on the market. So again, this is a, a standard and a commercial solution that's available. And the GRB downlink single, single from the satellites at a center frequency of 1686.6 megahertz. And um, we have a link budget that I have if anybody needs it, and I make that available to you. And that has the antenna gain to noise temperature of 15.2 uh, 
Um, we have a margin that I'll show you in a minute, about five. So an interesting thing here I just wanted to note is that, um, oh, wait a minute. There's some more information here about the two channels. Uh, the nominal antenna size is 4.5, but we do have some users that have smaller antennas, such as 3.8. Um, most of those are in the continental United States. Um, a, a user who is on the perimeter of our coverage area, like in France, for example, would need a larger antenna, maybe a 6 meter. And because we have dual polarization, a decision was made early to put products on the left-hand uh, channel that would be similar to what's on the uh, legacy goes and the GVAR. Um, but as far as I know, our users are using both channels. I don't know if anybody's only using one channel. But we, we do have the majority of the products are on the right-hand channel. So I was describing this before. And uh, we have the instrument data coming down to the wallops. Uh, the Wallops Command and Data Acquisition Station being processed, uh, level of zero data, uh, which are basically ABI or the detector values, being processed then and converted, um, and eventually uh, being uh, converted into uh, pixel values registered in a fixed grid. And that's all done at Wallops. And in that, the end product there is a level 1B product that's sent back up to the satellite. Level 1B product then comes back down on the GRB stream to the direct broadcast users like the station here and also to uh, the NOAA Satellite Operations Facility in Sulin. So anybody that's working with this data, uh, even in, um, uh, or if you have an interest in it, then you want to get these documents. And one thing we do for the user group is that we provide draft versions of advanced uh, versions so that so Gabby would have the version that is up to date with the current uh, software. So we can't update this document as often as we update the software. We update the software quite a bit. And we have a capability to do that. Um, in addition to the capability of using our contractor, Harris, we have a, a team that can do that. On, on, their, on our own. So we do make software changes, and we provide a draft version of the product definition user's guide to Gabby and the other members early, so they'll be ready. We just did that. It worked very well. We just made some changes in some space weather products, and the users were ready for those changes because we released an early version of this document. So this is the way the document's structured. It uh, has a lot of information in it. Um, one thing that's interesting is I mentioned that the GRB downlink is standards-based, and it works in layers. So the, uh, the off-the-shelf commercial front-end processing components are available to receive the outputs from a DVB S2 receiver, and then uh, extract it and output IP uh, encapsulated CCSDS based data packets. CCSDS is the cons Consultative uh, Committee for Space Data Systems, and it's a standard. And the space data packets then are retrieved, and and then um, using the uh, AOS or the Advanced Orbiting System Space Data Link Protocol. Frames are extracted, and then from the frames come uh, packets, and from the packets we derive data. We have the uh, image payload all documented, so the, these uh, files are self-sufficient. The payload has an image payload header and, a, and an image payload data. Um, so this is all documented and structured. And the important thing here on the GRB channel content summary is that everything is self-contained. So not only do we provide the NetCDF formatted products, we also provide information about the data, the metadata. And we even provide an information packet that we can put more information into. We have calibration data that's included. 
and error correction data that's included. So it's a self-contained uh, it's a self-contained package that comes in on the direct broadcast. So you can see the ABI, SUVI, GOM, the Space Weather products, Exus, Mag, and SICE, and the information packets all included, along with uh, channel synchronization and coding and error correction. And that's why it's so important for the documentation to be kept up to date. The other document I mentioned is a downlink specification, and that describes the, the receiver specification and everything you need to know about the, uh, uh, the single. So the, the last part of that would be to get the link budget so that you know what the specifications are. And um, we provide that link budget to anybody that needs it. And that's what this is here, just an example, some of the aspects of the link budget. Uh, so we get down to the bottom there, the calculated, uh, down the bottom of this slide, the calculated margin, 5.7, uh, which is a pretty good margin. Well, what a lot of people want to know is what's the RF coverage? So um, can I, where, how far can I be uh, and still get GO16, for example? And so this is a, an example that MIT Lincoln Labs provided. And uh, you can see the uh, center positions there for GOES East at 75.2, the checkout position for 89.5, where GO17 is now. The uh, storage position, uh, 105. That goes west is actually uh, 137, and that it's in the right place. It's just uh, they mark the uh, longitudes. But, so it goes west to 137, and so you can see the center positions. Then if you go out to the limb, you can see the this would be the extent for uh, goes west at uh, 137, and this would be the extent at 105. And this is the GO-16 extent, extent um, at 89.5, um, I'm sorry, GO-17, 89.5. And then this one right here is GOES East in its current position at 75.2, and this is the Western extent. So I, I mentioned this before, and this becomes important with uh, GRB because of when the uh, data is put on GRB for the, uh, the beta. PSP VRs, so um, th that's why we pay close attention to, the, to these schedules. Um, what do you think, Scott? You want to you try it? If I can bring the other slide up. Okay, I'm going to try to move on to another slide package that Scott has. Uh, they're in English. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's not going to work because we don't have the... Okay, so come on up. So Scott... Uh, Scott actually works at the University of Wisconsin with uh, Graham Martin, who's the lead on CSPP Geo. We, I work closely with Graham, and Scott's agreed to talk to these two slides. Thank you. You should have a drink right now or something. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, this is a freely available package that you can use, and you kind of attach it to your GRB signal, and it provides uh, quick looks. Um, that's what... Uh, Jim was talking about, I have a separate slide that just shows all the quick looks um, that can be generated. It works either as something that point, that's accepting the stream of data as it comes in, or if you're, if you're stashing all the data in one spot, you can also point it at that as well. So it has all of the uh, cloud and moisture imagery products, or all the, all the 16 channels, um, bands 1 through 16, and also some of the some of the level two products are in there now, and they have funding, I believe. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, all, it's in the works. Funding in the works to work on the other level two products as well. So the, the ones that you see on the screen here are available now. And they work with all the developers. So these are, this is supposed to mimic the ground system from Harris. Um, and NOAA has um, funded this. So there's an alternative for other people to get at the data. So it's just another way to make the data available. 
Um, and I'm, I'm around t tomorrow and Wednesday. You'll hear me talking a lot. So if you have any questions on this, um, I can either answer them and say, well, I know who can answer that question. So. Thank you, Scott. Sure. Okay, so this actually becomes important in, in the case where um, with, when we talk about the PDA and we, we have uh, only so many subscriptions available on the PDA, this is a way for direct broadcast users to generate level two products instead of getting them from some other source. So we work closely with the University of Wisconsin so that University of Wisconsin is using the same algorithms that are in the ground system. They implemented a little bit differently but to the same algorithms. So I'm going to shift over to GOES uh, 17 now, just uh, talk a little bit about that and GRB. And I, I mentioned that, um, that we are putting, that we will put GRB, we are putting GRB Excess products on, or GOES 17 Excess products are on, GRB, sorry about that. So I'll say that again. Go 17 Exus products are on GRB now. Uh, we we uh, hope to, to put the ABI products on, uh, but, and, at, uh, and we will put ABI products on at the beta um, review, after the beta review. <clears throat> So I, I've already mentioned the uh, data sharing, so I'll skip that. Um, I think I pretty well covered this. The only thing that I hadn't covered before is on class. You can see that class, which is our archive, is also receiving products prior to the beta validation. But again, that's used for calibration and validation. So it's not available to anybody other than the CalVal team. But after beta, then other users, I mean, after provisional, then other users can get it. At beta, only the GRB users get it because we're using it for testing. But at provisional, then uh, everybody gets it. So just to recap then, um, when the uh, instruments are outgassed and uh, and then data is available to come down on the primary uh, link, which is the raw data flow at 100 bit, million bits per second. That's coming down to wallops. And that internal flow is only used for testing. And, um, and, that, and that's when we realized we had an issue with the cooling system on GO17. But nobody else is seeing that data. That's in being used internally. We also have a capability to store that level zero data uh, for seven days. So we can store that at wallops if we need to go back and look at something. But beginning with uh, beta maturity level, and that's done at the peer stakeholder product validation review, then we start the external product distribution. GRB will be populated after the beta. The, the uh, PDA, or the product distribution access, and the uh, satellite broadcast network for the weather service will flow data uh, to their respective users for CalVal purposes, calibration and validation. But the PDA still won't serve anybody other than the CalVal teams. So now, uh, when we get to the provisional level, after the provisional review, and if the peer stakeholder product validation review team recommends uh, provisional validation, then all subscriptions open to the PDA and to the broadcast for all users uh, that receive those products. And the HRED MWIN will start broadcasting, and the GeoNetcast Americas will get its feed from the PDA. And uh, again, that's what our schedule looks like for uh, GO17. Sorry. I've talked about GO uh, Mode 6 already, so I'll skip that. 
So for Goes West, I know we don't have many users that will use Goes West, but what we do tell the uh, users is that uh, they need to uh, be prepared. Uh, and at this point, I would say be prepared to receive both GVAR and GRB. Uh, with uh, Goes East, it was a matter of receiving both if they wanted to compare the two before we moved uh, Goes 13 to storage. Uh, but because of the investigation that's underway with the cooling system anomaly, it would be a good idea for Goes West GVAR users to plan on keeping their antenna. And if they're going to install a GRB antenna, purchase a new one instead of upgrading. That's, that's what I would recommend now. But we'll get more information on that later. But we tell them what they need to know as far as the differences, what they need to know in order to receive the GRB, Pretty much everything I've just told you, we, we make sure people know. We've been doing this for a number of years now. Um, we present papers at um, different conferences, American Meteorological Society, and, um, and through different venues and on our websites. And uh, we have a manufacturer's list that I have the link for there. And we, uh, we try to keep this list current. And uh, a lot of these uh, people that are listed on here or participate in our user groups as well. Well, through the GRB user group, we've been able to find out who's planning on installing a GRB receive station and who's installed them and receiving data. And uh, a station's considered to be uh, an antenna and a receive station like I described earlier and uh, the software to process it. And so I've accounted for 77 of those received stations. And by breaking it out, um, I just chose to break it out this way. It could be breaking out differently. But uh, US government, 32. Uh, commercial users, 14. Academic, 7. Military, that's US military, 8. Um, internet, that's mostly United States Air Force. International, um, 15. But that, of course, includes government and military and academic, mostly. And then uh, Skywarn, which is actually a National Weather Service program where ham radio operators are involved and also people that report severe weather to the Weather Service. And there is a ham radio operator that installed a GRB station. And uh, maybe you recommend, and maybe you uh, recognize the antenna there. That's the antenna here. Uh, this is Gabriella's antenna. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. That's, yeah, next slide. I had uh, changed the slides around. I got an older version here. So, sorry about that. It's, I had that in an earlier version, but I'll, I'll get to your picture. <laughs> this, this is not the latest one I had. Okay, so, um, so if you look, at, uh, you look at this on a map, then uh, the green indicates the receive stations that are uh, receiving uh, GO-16. The uh, red and orange are sites that plan on installing, but have not installed yet. And, um, and if you see anything that's not current, let me know. We'll let everybody know. But the, uh, the, the orange are sites that are not installed, but they're using GeoNetCast until they st install their GRB. So you see clearly here that a lot of users are using GeoNetCast. Uh, we know that, but a lot of users that plan on putting GRB are relying on GeoNetCast in the interim. Okay. Okay, now this one is where the mistakes will show up. So is there anything here that doesn't look right? Because what I try to do is just kind of focus on the, uh, on the Caribbean. And I kind of cut it off a little bit, but uh, OK. A little formatting issue there. Actually, I can skip that slide. All right. OK, move on to uh, HRIT MWIN. Uh, our program manager for HRIT MWIN is Seth Clavenstein, who works with me. Um, but notably, Paul used to have that job before he retired, so he can certainly answer any questions that you have. Um, so as I mentioned, it, it's, uh, it's operational on GO-16 with a data relay capacity of 400 kilobits per second. Um, the MWIN content 
virtual, which is the virtual channels 20 to 22. It's in test mode and is expected to be operational in August. And the initial offering includes the MWIN products, which are products that are used by emergency managers, including National Weather Service watches, warnings, forecasts, graphics. And uh, very importantly, the h M1 includes the GOES DCS observations. And uh, the GOES DCS is moving off of uh, a commercial broadcast at DOMSAT, and a lot of users are moving over to h MWIN to receive their DCS observations. Environmental maritime products as well from the Hurricane Center, and GOES 16 products, um, including the uh, ABI CMI that I mentioned earlier, that's our key performance parameter. And it's converted to the uh, LRIT slash HRIT standard at a two kilometer spatial resolution. And band two is in uh, 0.5 kilometer for the uh, mesoscale imagery. So it's a transmit, the products are transmitted as a continuous file on the broadcast. And it's a departure from the, the legacy way of doing things. Um, retransmissions for MWIN are enabled for priority one and priority two to make sure that users get those products. And there's a file name convention that you can learn more about at that website. And we're planning um, to do post-launch testing um, on the HRIT. We're doing it on GRB right now, and we'll be doing it on HRIT. And uh, we're planning on a user group meeting, and right now it's tentatively scheduled for uh, next week, or week after next, second. <clears throat> so the, the PDA then provides the products to uh, the front end processor at Wallops, and that's where the, uh, the, the broadcast is actually created and then streamed up to the satellite for retransmission. So, um, so we have a processing stream that's indicated by this uh, diagram where the, uh, the products uh, come in uh, or distributed by the uh, PDA, um, the broadcast management, is going to distribute to the uh, broadcast stream services and the front end processor for uplink to the uh, satellite. <clears throat> so the HRIT M1, we have a similar diagram as to what we had before. You can see the, uh, the primary HRIT M1 uplink up from Wallops, and then the relay down uh, of the HRIT M1 single. And uh, the PDA then uh, uh, is, is where that stream is generated or distributed from, I should say. So the HRIT MWIN also has a user group. Uh, they have uh, 104 sites that are ready. Uh, 61 sites that are, uh, are planned and 35 that are still unknown. And because these are broadcast uh, services, then we, we're always trying to find out where our, our users are and, and what their plans are. I should mention there's no fee for these services. Um, all you need to do is purchase the equipment and then you receive the signal. Um, so we, we've been telling uh, users with the uh, legacy equipment, the LRIT antenna, that they do have to make some changes. Uh, they, they do, there's a new um, frequency, um, but the, the changes are not uh, significant like they were with the uh, GRB. The uh, previous uh, antennas are compatible. Um, we just need to modify the uh, receiver. There's a more information on the Gozar website. 
And um, there is also a prototype solution that's available. And there have actually been some hobbyists, or some people, amateur users, who have created their own solution at very low cost. I mentioned the uh, data collection system earlier. The uh, transmission rates are 300 bits per second and uh, 1,200 bits per second up to the uh, satellite from the data collection platforms. And, um, and then the data is received at Wallops and it is available for download uh, by users or it's also put on HRID M1 for transmission so that HRIT M1 users can receive it. We have over 28,000 um, platforms that are transmitting data up through the service. And uh, in addition to the water levels and weather report, weather observations, we have tide gauges and tsunami uh, buoys and sensors. So there's some very important data that's on here um, and a lot of volume, eight, 8 million observations per day. And this is a diagram of the data collection system. Start with the observing platform. The transmitters trans transmit up, and we're doing 300 and 1,200 now, Bod. <coughs> up to the satellite, which is used as a transponder. And uh, not only do, does Wallops receive it, but the uh, EDDN, which is a uh, center, USGS center, in South Dakota, they receive it as well. And anybody with a direct readout ground station can receive it. Most users, though, will um, go into this system here. It's called DADS to retrieve it or receive it on the HRIT M1. OK, back to uh, processing here. Uh, for the Gozar series. We have all these products that are uh, the baseline products. The um, aerosol detection, aerosol optical depth, clear sky mass, cloud and moisture imagery is the, the one that's our mission critical one, and, uh, and so on. Um, cloud top height, cloud top phase, cloud top pressure. Drive motion winds is an important product where you can actually get wind vectors. Uh, from the uh, drive from, from the basic radiance uh, data. And, uh, and we've got a great lesson from uh, Scott on fire and hotspot characterization uh, tomorrow. The hurricane intensity estimation, uh, we're still working on getting that one through the validation process, um, but we are progressing with that. Um, but most of these are, are moving along really well. And we have the volcanic ash detection height. These are all the space weather products. The GOM is a lightning detection that has events, groups, and flashes. And there's a new product on the GeoNetcast now, uh, made available by uh, Brazil. The size products, magnetometer, the uh, Exus, and the uh, SUVI products. So most of the, uh, the level two products are all generated um, in the uh, environmental satellite processing and distribution system. And this actually runs at the center in NOAA satellite, satellite operations facility in Suitland. There's a, a product generation component and a product distribution part, which I've been talking about a lot, which is the product distribution and access. And, and then the PDA also feeds the HRIT M1 data stream through the front end processors and also feeds the data to the contractor who makes the GeoNetcast America's data flow up to the commercial satellite to the users. And, and we have high speed network and, uh, and services that we maintain through the uh, center in order to do all that. So the uh, we, we do use our NOAA uh, high-speed wide area network, the N-Wave, for terrestrial communications. We actually do have a connection they haven't talked about between Wallops and Suitland that we can feed the GRB 
data to uh, NSOF without using a GRB antenna. And we use that mostly um, during post-launch testing. Okay. And this is a wiring diagram of what the ES ESPDS looks like in the ESPC. So we have the uh, GRB receiver at NSOF, which is the primary means. It feeds the GO16 data into the product processing zone to the product distribution access uh, so users can retrieve it off of the PDA. And these are the authorized operational users that have uh, real-time needs, like meteorological services. So we have a contemporary or a you know, concurrent thing that's working now with the legacy system, just to show you that the GOES 14 and 15 uses the legacy geoprod system and geo distribution system um, as well. Uh, Wallops um, also receives the GOES 16 data, uh, as you know. And then we have our backup uh, for Wallops for the legacy system. And then we have our backup for Goes R series in uh, West Virginia. So I've talked about this already, so let's get through this. Oh, I actually haven't talked about this yet. Um, I did mention that we, uh, we have to be very careful about our capacity in the PDA. It's a relatively new system. We budgeted for so much capacity in the near term. So um, while we recognize the need for full and open exchange, we provide that through a combination of services. So um, non-real-time users are encouraged to receive data through, retrieve data through class, which is the archive. Uh, real-time users can use the GRB capability. And uh, PDA for uh, authorized operational users like meteorological services. So, uh, so, we're, some, so we're limiting our access to the PDA. And because of that, I don't think there are many people in the room here that are actually going to be requesting PDA access, if any. So uh, we have the slides here. And, uh, and we have an access request form that users fill out. And then thanks to uh, Martin, uh, he actually, uh, oh, actually, he just put it in here. So it's OK. I don't blame you. <laughs> so I guess if anybody has a need to, to use this access form and has any questions, you know, contact us, and we can always get some help from international activities if we need it and fill this out. And then our PDA users follow uh, rules of behavior for, uh, for access. Uh, this is always uh, a challenge for us to provide support through the PDA. Um, we, we had budgeted for a certain amount, and we pretty much have reached it now with the uh, news goes and R and JPSS satellites. So we have to limit the uh, um, number of people that have access to this. And in fact, we've frozen new subscriptions until we come up with a new uh, policy. The best way to go if, if you don't need the data in real time is to go through class. Class is, uh, is a NOAA's archive and delayed mode distribution system for distribution of NOAA and U.S. Department of Defense, uh, both POSE, polar, and geostationary data. It stores uh, an average of 130 terabytes a month of data. The total amount of data in class is almost 11 terabytes, petabytes, and uh, a, a number of GOES-16 ABI Level 2 products are now available through class. There, there is a, a delay. So it's not real time, but, but it, it does meet the research needs. Uh, there's some description here where to find certain products. I won't uh, read all this, but, um, but it's all available on the class website, which I have the link for. Um, so let's see. So on the, on the top there, the very top, uh, the columns are, uh, to the one on the very left is class order types. So the order types are the ad hoc orders, large orders, block orders, and subscription. And then the next column is average completion time. So the average completion time for an ad hoc order is usually uh, within 12 to 24 hours. And, um, and then the average completion time for large orders, 24 to 48 hours, and the average completion time for block orders 
more than 48 hours. And that's done on the website. And there are good directions on how to do that. On, um, I have a link on directions on how to do this. And then subscription, a standing order, the delay is less than six to seven hours. So if you know what you're going to need, doing the subscription is the way to go. The next column is average file limit. So ad hoc orders are limited to uh, 500 files. And large orders are limited to 1,000 to 3,000 files. And uh, block orders are limited to 3,000 to 6,000 files. And subscription orders, there's no limit. The last column there is uh, con contact the class help desk. And um, you don't contact the help desk for ad hoc orders or large orders, but you do contact the class help desk to set up block orders and subscriptions. So if you were to set up uh, a block order or a subscription, you would call them other, rather than doing it online. So this shows the data availability in class for uh, GOES, POSE, JSON, and SNPP. And as I mentioned, GOES is three to four hours. So th the way to start this then is to go to this link and register, set up your user preferences, select a data family to search, search for data, select the files, and you review shopping cart, just like you're buying something online. Review your order status, and then um, confirm your order. And the whole demonstration is available at this website. It's a good video that shows you how to do it. So at GeoNetcast Americas, you're going to get a lot of great information on this. So uh, we're just going to kind of give you a, a quick uh, overview. And then you'll be getting a lot more on this uh, during the workshop. Muchas gracias. Terminado este segmento, vamos con la última parte del día de hoy y queremos darle la bienvenida a la doctora Natalia Donahoe, quien ahora nos hablará del sistema GNC. Correct. Thank you. Hola. There's only one word I know. <laughs> Real nice uh, to see you all. How many people familiar with Janet Cast Americas? Raise your hand. Okay, I hope I see you on Thursday um, because we're gonna have a real lengthy overview and also hands-on experience, but um, really happy to announce that we're gonna have some disaster preparedness um, exercises. So um, again, this is just a quick introduction because I'm new into this role. Um, I'm a new program manager for Cast America. I replaced uh, Paul, who retired, and I just started in June. So I'm still learning as well. But I'm really happy to see you all, and I'm really happy to be here in Caribbean and uh, working with you and our international partners. But uh, we also have um, one of our partners from Brazil, Diego. He's here with us, and uh, he has extensive experience on setting up stations and helping users with JNetcast America antennas, equipment, and um, basically we're here all week and we're, we'll be happy to, to answer any questions you have, including the products, the um, upcoming exercises, or if you have questions, like Jim was just saying, there are so many options to get um, data from um, NOAA satellites. But what if you don't have a budget for GRB? What if you don't have um, subscription to PDA? And then it's too late to get data from class. So Janetcast Americas um, is a really valuable option. In fact, uh, it's uh, affordable compared to other systems. And also, um, you can set it up yourself. I know there are also off-the-shelf options available. And I have happy to, to talk to somebody who's interested in purchasing and get in the system, so we have a lot of um, information. But just a quick uh, over, yeah, just, um, I'm not gonna go into details because of the timing and also because I have really uh, extensive introduction to Gen Cast America on Thursday. I have an hour talk with all details that you need to know and you want to learn. But basically, in, even as I speak, my slides are outdated because we now have 81 users in 19 countries, not 78, and that's continually growing. I also have user, user group that we just started in June, 
and we'll have quarterly meetings. So the same information exchange and basically a forum for our partners and providers who can um, discuss upcoming issues and data. Um, I'm also happy to report that um, aside from GO16 and GOSR data that Jim's highlighted today, we also have JPSS or follow data available on JNF Cast Americas and they have uh, like including day night band that you probably heard of. So a really interesting set of products. Again, just a quick overview. Um, this is what you have on uh, on uh, Cast America for GO16 and uh, which way? I'm not sure which way. It's okay. Um, the next one. The next one. And um, what I wanted to highlight, oh, by the way, all the presentations from the workshop will be available online somewhere, right? So, so you don't have to take notes. And then what's important that all the slides have some links that are live links. So you can actually click on the links and it will bring you to the uh, correct information. So we have a lot of documentations and lessons learned and instructions online. So you can get it both from NOAA sites and both from Brazilian and pay. So and if, in, in fact, if you have any questions, take this opportunity and talk to us because um, we're here for you. We're experts from, from, from our agency, but we're here to work with you and, and talk about your questions and hopefully resolve them. So I'm not going to take much time, but um, I'm really excited again. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And I hope I'll <laughs> learn more Spanish by the end of this week. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Natalia. So this is uh, somewhat of a summary slide. So th what this does is this shows you the two direct broadcast and the free broadcast. So the two direct broadcasts are the GRB operating at 31 megabits per second with a latency of less than 10 seconds from product generation to, re to uh, receipt by a direct broadcast user like the uh, station here. And Emirate HRED MWIN is uh, you know, built for a different purpose, and uh, because of the way we distribute the data, it has a little bit more latency, but still good at four minutes. Uh, 400 kilobits per second, because uh, we want users to be able to use a relatively small antenna. And um, so this antenna would normally be 4.5 meters, could be smaller, could be larger. This, h red M1 antenna should be, Paul, a, a meter or so. h red M1, 1.8. Uh, GeoNetCast, 1.8, 2.4 meter. Uh, GeoNetCast running at 12 megabits per second uh, between six and eight minutes latency. So this just kind of describes with some pictures. Uh, sorry, Gabby, I had your picture, but I didn't make it in the presentation. So we'll see it, though. So the big data project is another way to get um, pro uh, products. It's the project, project is a demonstration project designed to facilitate public use of uh, key environmental data sets by providing copies of NOAA's information in the cloud. Uh, there's a great website there. It has information about the project. And even more importantly, you can go to the, uh, the different uh, companies that are participating in this process, and you can retrieve goes 16 products off the cloud from, from, these, uh, from these links. There are, there are more uh, participants in this demonstration, but these are the three that have Go16 data. So there are lots of websites that have Go16 data. The Goes East Image Viewer is the NOAA website, the primary one. And it also we have uh, other sites that link to this. And you can go to this website and download uh, a variety of uh, the Go16 products, uh, different bands, different scans, and uh, including the, uh, um, the image that you see here. 
There's a, the local website here has, uh, has great uh, products on it that you can go to and retrieve that I'm sure you're familiar with. I made this a little while ago, so these aren't current. Um, the uh, Columbian Air Force has uh, a website that they maintain, and they're looking into installing a GRB receiver. Right now, they're pulling these products off of the NOAA website. The University of Wisconsin, where Scott is from, has several places where you can go to get imagery. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of them, and it has uh, a great variety of uh, products that you can pull um, on ABI. So a lot of functionality there that you can explore. Uh, and they have several uh, sites that you can go to. And I've also put in here uh, a link that uh, University of Wisconsin provided with um, all, the, all the websites that they have discovered as well. Uh, another cooperative institute, uh, NOAA has cooperative institutes um, that work with us closely. Uh, University of Wisconsin SIMS is one. Um, the Colorado State University CIRA is another one. And CIRA has this website called The Slider. And um, this is a website that a lot of people use. Um, so a number of universities are retrieving data, um, and a number of them retrieve them from UNIDATA, UCAR, which is the University Corporation of Atmospheric Research. And um, UCAR has a GRB antenna and then provides data to uh, universities, including this one here. This is uh, the page, I believe. Uh, NASA has uh, their NASA Sport website. I'm going to get a better one here at the end, I think. Uh, Maybe not. Yeah. This is a, yep, this is the NASA Sport GOM data overlaid on top of uh, ABI, um, ABI channel 14. And back, this is NASA Sport with ABI imagery. And University of Maryland has GOM data, lightning data as well. Yep, I think that's it. So UCAR supports uh, universities with uh, data. Uh, they're receiving GO-16, and they're, they're ready for GO-17. They also receive GO-16 products on NOAA port, which I mentioned with the satellite broadcast network. You can go to the Unidata homepage for more information. But they provide uh, about four different ways of getting products, um, including the MacIDAS abstract data distribution environment, which a number of people use with MacIDAS, the Threads data server, uh, which provides uh, access for a variety of applications for no port and GRB delivered content, uh, as a website, and the internet data distribution, which is a real-time data push for no port and GRB content. And um, you can get more information from them. So I've listed all these links so you can go and uh, look, at, look at these websites and, uh, and enjoy those. And I, I've listed, uh, some, uh, listed some other links as well where you can get additional information, including the um, Big Data Project. And again, um, our notification. And I uh, really encourage you to subscribe to the ESPC help desk if you need that information, because the ESPC stands for the Environmental Satellite Processing Center, and they issue all notifications of changes to our satellite constellations, product outages, things that uh, GRB receivers need to know. But it's useful to other people as well. So what I've, I've hoped uh, we've done here is, is provide you enough information about GRB that you see the benefits of it as a fast and reliable way of retrieving products. Uh, HRET MWIN uh, provides low resolution imagery, but it serves the needs of emergency managers. Uh, the cost is a lot less. Um, GR GRB receivers are pretty intensive as far as the hardware or software it takes to install them. 
Atrid MWIN is a much less, much less expensive installation, GeoNetCast as well. Um, so that we feel like we're providing a number of uh, different ways for people to retrieve the Gozar series products. Uh, in addition to uh, our operational users that retrieve it on the PDA. And we think with class that um, we pretty much have everybody covered as far as uh, meeting their, their needs within our capability and our resources. And then, uh, then we've got users that are retrieving the data and then providing value-added products like they are here. So I think there's a lot of great stuff going on that we're very excited about. And then again, all the acronyms for you at the end. <laughs> thank you, Gabby. OK, well, thank you very much. Gracias. Eh, con esto concluimos el, la sesión del día de hoy del, del taller, pero tenemos algunos minutos por si alguno de ustedes quisiera tener alguna pregunta en concreta para aquí nuestros ponentes y aprovechar el tiempo que nos sobra y también salimos también temprano para que no nos toque el tráfico. Entonces, eh, aquí me apoya Jesús con el micrófono. Si alguien de ustedes tiene una pregunta, por favor, levante la mano y llegamos hacia ustedes. Uh, you mentioned the mode 6. And the, the mode 6 is all is only going to be available for uh, go 17 or go 16 is going to have also mode 6. Okay, thank you very much. Gabby, as usual, is keeping me out of trouble. <laughs> yes, I was supposed to say that if we decide to use mode 6, we will use it for both Go 16 and Go 17. So we would use them for both satellites. Yeah, um, thank you very much. No, no, Are you aware of the, the increase of yep. the amount of go. data because it's okay. an issue? Okay, good. Well, Paul told me that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think what we need to do is, because the weather service is going to be the primary um, input for the decision, we need to make sure that the decision makers know what the impacts are. So um, I'll take that for an action that uh, we have to figure out within my branch how we make sure to get that information up to the decision makers so they know what the impacts are. Because um, I don't know if I'm excited or worried about it. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, Paul was on that right away. You, anything you want to say? No, I just, if you could put slide like 62 back up. Absolutely. So can, I think it's for the GeoNetCast links so that people can take a look before Friday's. Uh, 62? I was in the 60s. It's not, it's not this one, right? It's the GeoNetCast one? The GeoNetCast one that has the. Thanks. 66, maybe 65. Am I using the wrong PC? Uh, okay, um, let's see. Oh, what happened? I thought I had there a minute ago. Should be connected to that one there, right? Ah, did it come in? I I do it. Uh, well, that's all right. Okay. Well, I I don't have control over here, but maybe maybe somebody does. Yeah, yeah, Esther. Haciendo 
para hacerte mejor el sistema. Los sistemas. Geonicastamerica.gov you say if only in the search Geonicast blog at Impey you'll find it right away. No, no, I put it on my app. Okay. Another question. Yeah. Oh. About uh, mesoscale. You mentioned that we in some event may request a mesoscale uh, it, it would work for Mexico I mean we can have a, an institution designed it by Mexican government or how it works uh, yeah. it, well, usually it would be a, a, a government representative but um, I think uh, what needs to happen is uh, somebody from Mexico that wants to be the point of contact who wants to be the official point of contact, uh, needs to contact Catherine Moser at that email address. So if you want to talk to her and gather more information, you might be able to help with that decision. Yeah, because okay. that's something that we have to discuss as okay. a country and to see who is the, the best to okay. decide. Perhaps in April, I don't know. Well, if you need anything more from us, you know, feel free to talk to Catherine. Yeah, But thank usually you. that would be a government. Yeah, contact. because I don't know, well, university is supposed to be also government, but it's not that close Understand. to. So I think a real governmental institution has to be a okay. part of that. Okay, good questions. Thank you. Bueno, pues no veo más preguntas por el momento. Les agradecemos mucho su tiempo. Como ven, estamos cerrando a las 4 en punto de la tarde, lo cual creo que es conveniente para todos tener un poco más de luz y no que nos toque el tráfico horroroso de esta ciudad. Gracias y esperamos contar con su participación el resto de los días. Les recuerdo, hoy, mañana y el miércoles es exclusivamente el taller relacionado con el satélite Go16 y sus aplicaciones y usos. Y a partir del los jueves y viernes estaremos enfocados exclusivamente en los temas de la antena Geonetcast y tendremos muchas cosas interesantes también que tenemos planeadas con este sistema. Muchas gracias, muy buena tarde y esperamos mañana su participación con nosotros y la comida estará como siempre y, y así. Hasta luego. <risa>